Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at how to completely solve an ideal basic circuit element. This involves determining the direction of the positive and negative charge, the voltage rise and drop between the terminals, whether the circuit element is supplying or absorbing power, and whether the electrons gain or lose energy as they pass through the ideal basic circuit element. The theory behind the ideal basic circuit element is discussed in other videos in this channel. The links are provided at the end of this video. In this video, we will dive straight into solving problems. Solving ideal basic circuit element problems can be slightly tricky because the voltage and current can have negative or positive values. Also, the voltage polarity and the current direction can be marked in different ways. Let's see how to handle such problems in a systematic manner which avoids mistakes. Let us consider the first problem. The ideal basic circuit element is given where both voltage and current have positive values as shown. The voltage polarity and current direction is marked. To determine the direction of charge, we invoke the definition of I. By convention, I denotes the conventional current, which is the, also the direction of positive charge. The direction of negative charge is opposite. We can see that the conventional current is entering the terminal marked 1. Therefore, positive charge is flowing into terminal 1. The direction of the electronic current is opposite and we can see that negative charge is flowing into terminal 2. To determine the voltage relationships, we invoke the definition of V. V is always defined as voltage at the terminal marked plus minus voltage at the terminal marked minus. For, for this example, this means that V is given by voltage at the terminal marked plus, which is V1, minus voltage at the terminal marked minus, which is V2, and this has a value 10 volts. We can rearrange this equation to get V1 is equal to V2 plus 10, which implies that voltage at terminal 1 is greater than voltage at terminal 2. Now we can specify the voltage rise and drop. Since voltage at terminal 1 is greater than voltage at terminal 2, we have a voltage rise going from terminal 2 to 1 and we have a voltage drop going from terminal 1 to 2. To determine the power, we invoke the passive sign convention. This states that when the current enters through the positive terminal of an element, power is plus Vi, otherwise power is minus Vi. We can see that the conventional current is entering the terminal marked plus. Therefore, power is plus Vi. And when we substitute the values, we get plus 70 watts. Since the power is positive, the element is absorbing power. When the element is absorbing power, electrons are losing energy as they pass through the ideal basic circuit element. Let us consider the next example. The ideal basic circuit element is given where voltage is positive but current is negative. 
the voltage polarity and current direction are as marked. Since current has a negative value, we must first convert it to a positive value by flipping the direction of current before we decide the direction of positive and negative charge. This is a necessary step when current has a negative value. So conventional current of minus 4 amp flowing is in this direction is equivalent to conventional current of 4 amps flowing in the opposite direction and then the direction of electronic current is opposite to the direction of conventional current. Therefore, we can see that positive charge is flowing into terminal 2, whereas negative charge is flowing into terminal 1. To determine the voltage rise and drop, we invoke the definition of V. So V is defined as voltage at the terminal marked plus, which is terminal 2 in this case minus voltage at the terminal marked minus which is terminal 1 in this case and this has a value 5 volts. Rearranging this equation we can show that V2 is equal to V1 plus 5 which implies voltage at terminal 2 is greater than voltage at terminal 1. This means that we get a voltage rise when we go from terminal 1 to 2 and we get a voltage drop when we go from terminal 2 to terminal 1. To determine the power we invoke the passive sign convention. So power is given as voltage times current and the si to determine the sign of this we can see that in this case the conventional current is entering the terminal marked minus. So power is written with a minus sign and then we just substitute the values. So this is minus 5 and the current is minus 4 amps. The two negatives become a plus. So we get plus 20 watts. Since the final answer is positive, we say that the element is absorbing power, absorbing or consuming or dissipating power. Since the element is absorbing or consuming or dissipating power, electrons are losing energy as they pass through this ideal basic circuit element. Let's consider this uh, last third example. The ideal basic circuit element is given where both voltage and current have negative values. The voltage polarity and current direction are marked. Since the current is negative, we have to do this intermediate step to convert it to a positive value before we decide the direction of positive and negative charge. So conventional current of minus 2 amps flowing in this direction is the same as a conventional current of positive 2 amps flowing in this direction and then the direction of electronic current is opposite. So we can see that in this case positive charge is entering into terminal 1 and negative charge is flowing into terminal 2. To determine the voltage rise and drop relationships we invoke the definition of V so V is voltage at the terminal marked plus which is terminal 1 minus voltage at the terminal marked minus which is terminal 2 and this has minus 4.5 volt value. 
And this equation we can rearrange to show if we move V2 to the other side and minus 4.5 to the other side, we get V2 is equal to V1 plus 4.5. And this implies that voltage at terminal 2 is greater than voltage at terminal 1. So from this, we can determine that there is a voltage rise when we go from terminal 1 to terminal 2 and equivalently there is a voltage drop when we go from terminal 2 to terminal 1. To determine the power, power is given by product of voltage and current. We can see that the conventional current is entering the terminal marked plus. So we write power with a minus sign and then substitute values. So this gives minus, minus 4.5 times minus 2 and this gives minus 9 watts. Since the power is a negative value, we say that the element is supplying power. Since the element is supplying or developing or generating power, electrons are gaining energy as they pass through the ideal basic circuit element. In this video, we have discussed how to solve an ideal basic circuit element by systematically invoking the definition of current, voltage and power we can completely solve an ideal basic circuit element. I hope the video is helpful to your learning. Thank you for watching the video.